can do better than this. No.
Good evening. My name is Chris Pappenfuth. It is my privilege to serve as one of the pastors on staff here at First Covenant Church, and uh, very much my privilege to have uh, had the opportunity to work with Heidi on the staff since I arrived here. On behalf of the family, I want to thank you for coming here to this celebration of the life of a, a remarkable woman. And I'm so glad that you would choose to join us this evening. We have gathered here to worship God and bear witness to the resurrection as we celebrate the life of Heidi. We come together in our grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Heidi Marie Broberg was born August 23rd, 1957, in Litchfield, Minnesota, to Stanley and Laura Berquist. She was baptized and confirmed at Zion Lutheran Church in Litchfield. She grew up in Litchfield and attended Wagner Elementary School and Litchfield High School, graduating in 1975. She then attended Wilmer Community College and Mankato State University, graduating in 1980 with a degree in physical education. Later on that same year, she was united in marriage to Don Broberg at Zion Lutheran Church in Litchfield. They lived in West Bend, Iowa, Morgan, and Wilmer, Minnesota before moving to their home in rural Pennock in 2013. Heidi worked right here at First Covenant Church in building administration and care at First Covenant Church for over 20 years. She is survived by her husband, Don, her children, Abby and Andrew, David and Maggie, Lauren and Dustin, Jacob and Morgan, her eight grandchildren, her brothers, Sheldon, Gary, and Roger, and sisters, Karen and Betty. This is a celebration of the life of Heidi Broberg, and it is a witness to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that one day we all who are, have given our hearts over to the Lord may be united with those in the eternal chorus of Alleluia and Amen. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This we recognize and celebrate this day. I invite you, if you are able, to stand with us as we sing a congregational song, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Uh, Becca and Stephanie will be leading us in that, and the words will be on the screen. Grace appear 
Please join with me in prayer. Gracious God and Father, may your spirit fill this place. May your presence that was so evidently evident in the life of your servant Heidi be felt by each of us. Even in our grief and tears, may we know that because of Jesus and his death and his victory over death, this is also a day of hope. A day in which we can rejoice that the one whose life we remember is now in your presence. We are thankful, Lord, that you are here with us, and we dedicate this service of worship to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Worship him. 
Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. His holy name, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy seated. I invite the family uh, that is going to be sharing some reflections to come forward uh, at this time and uh, share a little bit of your thoughts on Heidi. Because 
we loved each other so much. We would travel together and surprise each other. And if you didn't know this about my mom, she liked pranks. So they would leave rubber cockroaches and snakes and little things in their houses to let them know, oh yeah, we came to visit. <laughs> she was raised in Litchfield, where she went to the high school, where she was very ambitious. She was into everything and lettered in four sports, which I could hardly participate in one. She had four. She made lifelong friends there, where even to this day, they get together once a year and make lefsa, which is something they found out mom knew how to make, and asked them to teach her how. She constantly was letting people learn what she knew. She wanted to share her skills and let them grow and experience things that she knew she wanted to share with the world. She went to Ridgewater, where she met the love of her life. We recently learned how they met and how, for dad, it was, I think, love at first sight. He knew. And we found a photo of that dance that they met at each other. And the look in her eyes say the same thing. She looked at him like he was the only thing in the world, because he was. And he looked at her the same way. The love that they showed us growing up really showed us what our relationships were supposed to be and how they were supposed to be built. Love each other, communicate, and trust each other. And then I get locked out of my iPad. They both went to Mankato where they graduated and became teachers and they were married in 1980. Much to their surprise, people showed up with <clears throat> permanent hair and perms and very fro-like styles. I believe <clears throat> you know who you are. They had 40 years of love together. Oh, and two were pregnant, very pregnant, I guess. They had been together for 40 years. The day, after we, the day before we found out mom was sick was their 40th wedding anniversary, and we signed them up to play the newlywed game at the Stingers game. They got every question right. The greatest joy in her life were probably us kids and the grandkids we brought into this world. Abby, David, Jacob, and I were her world. She was our chauffeur, our doctor, our cook, everything. She thought of us before herself. She thought of everyone before herself. She was always running us to and from or working to make sure we had our piano lessons or our sports, whatever we wanted to be in, she made it happen. Her and dad worked so hard to make that happen. She never complained about really anything, which I gave her a lot to complain about. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I probably gave her a lot to complain about. But she never did. She just loved us through everything. We challenged her, we pushed her, and we pushed her buttons, but she did it. Her eight grandchildren, yes, are the happiest things of her life. She was always ready for a game of kickball, jumping on the trampoline to take them overnight, bake cookies with them, go to their sports, their games, everything. She loved spending the time with her kids. She was very athletic. She did not let us be lazy. We were not allowed to sit at home. As I was reminded, we all had chore lists every morning to get done before we could go do anything, anything. Which was a good thing because we all got our work ethics from her, I think, and dad. You were up at the crack of dawn and off to work and back when it was dark and she ran everything in between that. She worked here at First Covenant for over 20 years. I think she lived here as much as she lived at home. Probably. About, or it seemed that way. Or we were here just as much. She worked hard and took great pride in keeping this place spick and span. No request was too big. She had a post-it in her office under the stairs that simply stated, yes. She had a servant's heart. She was a Martha. She wanted to make sure the church was always ready and clean so everyone 
could relax and connect with God, that she connected with him as well. She was passionate about church and was involved, whether it be from singing in choir, the gardening committee, committee, or one of the many Bible studies she attended. When she signed up for the last one, it was Monday nights for three years, I think two or three, and she didn't realize at first that it was Monday night football. <laughs> yes, she was quite conflicted at a moment about that, but easily gave it up for her Bible study. But she did catch all of the highlights afterwards. She got involved in women's ministries where she went to many triannuals and traveled with many of her friends. She made lifelong friends through triannual and through women's ministries. She became very passionate early on about human trafficking, Project Ava. She bought all sorts of handmade crafts by women in other countries to support women-owned businesses who just wanted to survive and provide for their kids. The favorite thing she did was driving the bus to camp with kids. She thought that was just one of the best things of her job, and she loved it. I think the best part for her was stopping at Dairy Queen on the way home and getting ice cream with all of the kids, but always making sure that even the kids who didn't have money got ice cream as well. She never wanted anybody to be left out or felt not included. She spent so much of her time here, I remember cleaning up after weddings. Late at night, she'd grab all of us and we'd all come over and quick clean up so that church was perfectly spotless for Sunday school and church the next morning. Not a fingerprint on the window. Don't touch the windows on your way out. <laughs> she was very firm on some of her rules to be followed in the church, but flexed on them more times than not. Dad and I got to clean out her desk, and when we opened a drawer, we found a bunch of Nerf bullets. She wasn't wasteful, so she wouldn't throw them away, but Rocky definitely didn't get them back until we gave them to him. <laughs> she loved being here and seeing all of the kids and people grow in their faith with God. She absolutely loved watching the kids grow and encouraged them and supported them. There are a lot of kids in this church that became like bonus grandkids to her. And she loved them very much. And because of her, I have three generations of friends that mean the world to me. Her job was more than a job. She saw it as serving her Lord. Her office desk had her daily devotional on it. And the last page that was marked was the very last day she worked here. July 18th. Her faith was stronger than anything else. I tried to find her favorite passage in her Bible, but when I opened it up thinking I'd find a highlighted verse or two, half the Bible was marked. <laughs> so I couldn't figure out which one was her favorite, and that's because the whole thing was. She lived her life that way. Everything was the word of God and how God would want it. When I would get frustrated, she would tell me to pray about it and that God had a plan. It took a while for me to calm down because I have a very high temper that I think I kind of got for her, but she learned how to control it. She truly lived her faith and shared what her God-given strengths in her job. She kept every prayer request she was ever given and prayed over them continually. We found a stack of calendars, which we originally thought were the church work calendars, but turns out it was our private home calendars for about the past 30 years. I can tell you where we were on what day. But in there were prayer requests from staff meetings from 15 years ago. She still had them and would occasionally pray over them because they were still relevant. My mom was an amazing woman, and all of you here got to know her. The last year has been really hard, but I know that she is where she wanted to be, and what her goal always was, was the kingdom of heaven. And as we watched her leave this earth, I knew she woke up on the other side. 
and saw people that she hadn't seen in years. And for that, I am thankful. And I know that we will see her again one day. I'm Karen. I'm Betty. It was Karen's idea for us to get up here because she didn't want to do it by herself. But since she's the older sister, I listened to her just like I did Heidi because I'm the younger one, so I just kind of sat back and looked pretty. Um, so Karen gets to go first. And I wanted to say I don't think I can do this when we got here. But I we're here. About that too, it you can say it later. Okay. <laughs> a sister is someone in the family that when you grow up, you're a sister. But as the years go, you become friends. But that friendship develops more deep, and it becomes a sisterhood. And that's what we had. Yes, Heidi was a prankster. One day... I called up Heidi and says, let's go surprise Betty for her 60th birthday. Yeah, let's do that. She was the Sherlock Holmes of this whole thing. She went on Facebook and followed her friends and found someone to come and pick us up at the airport, take us to a meeting place for breakfast to meet with Betty. We could not tell the family, Betty's family, because they don't keep secrets. They would tell everybody, so we had to keep it within ourselves. We couldn't even tell our kids, our own kids, because we wanted a secret. Even Heidi told the kids, no, I can't tell them. But she told one, though. And that was Jacob, to keep an eye on the dog. But always nobody knew. Because we were afraid that it would get back to Betty by just conversations. Because our family talked sometimes among each other and it would slip out. So we didn't say anything. But we flew down there. This gal picked us up at the airport. We met Betty at the restaurant. And this gal brought Betty in. Here's Don, Heidi, and I sitting behind the menus. So she went and see us and said, let's sit here. And Betty said, no, we got to sit here. There's other people there. No, no, we're going to sit with them. She took our menus and pulled it down, and she goes, <gasps> it was priceless. Then after we ate and socialized and laughed, it was a hoot. It really was. Then we went and found Mark at his grandson's house. And Betty said, come out here, Mark. Why? Came out. <laughs> he was surprised. Nobody knew. We had a wonderful time on that trip. It was in September of 2019. Mm -hmm. And it was the best trip with the sisters. Oh, then here's Heidi's idea. Here we are buying groceries for us to be there. She'd go up to somebody, it's her birthday. Go wish her a happy birthday. We had the whole store, people going up to her saying, happy birthday, happy birthday. <laughs> no idea who they were or what. It was fun. Heidi loved to have fun, no matter where she went, and to celebrate. It was a great trip. Heidi, like Lauren said, is competitive, loved her sports. In our family, we have a traveling trophy for Super Bowl football. Heidi's name is on it, as well as many, many others. Not me, but... Not me. <laughs> but 
she is the only one's name on there that picked a perfect season for this, through the playoffs. She never missed a single one. Some have come close, maybe missed one or two, but she was perfect. So Heidi, well done. <laughs> Um, having her as a sister is like having a best friend. You can't get rid of them. They are always with you, no matter the good times or the bad times. She was always there for us. And we would support each other through the good times and bad times. It was a joy. But the most important thing that she has help me through life is her faith and her love for her family. I have learned through the years how important that faith is and how I should come on an everyday living life. And I'm grateful that Don and Heidi brought their family up with the Lord and what they have shared through the, the years. Thank you very much. So Heidi's nickname from me was the Energizer Bunny. And I think some of you can relate to that because Heidi just didn't stop. She was always with her family, with her grandkids, with activities. She exhausted me. I mean, she was so busy. And we'd go on vacation together. Karen's like, I want to sit by the pool. I want to relax. And Heidi's going, where are we going today? <laughs> And I'm in the middle going, I want to do both. Um, but she was the Energizer Bunny. So when I retired, she asked me, well, what do you do? Do you sit around eating bonbons all day? And I said, what's wrong with bonbons? Uh, she just couldn't understand. She was, but she always gave, as many of you know. She gave, she gave, she served. She served the Lord. She served other people before herself. And... I really looked up to that and her faith. Um, it was her and Don um, it, when they were at college that really helped me to stay the road. I wandered from the Lord, but those guys stayed the same, and they were always there. And the, the faith Heidi had to always stay straight and narrow following the Lord was just really inspirational. Heidi was a great sister. Oh, my goodness. People talk about fighting, and I'm like, I don't remember fighting with you, maybe. Um, <laughs> but not with Heidi. We were two years apart. We were the closest of all the siblings. And we were close. We would sing together in the car. We would do plays at night when we were supposed to be in bed. Um, and we were close. And it was really, I feel blessed. I mean, she was an awesome sister. And then that birthday party was my best birthday ever when they came to visit. So I'm appreciative of, of how she treated me, how she loved me. She loved others. She loved her family. And I love the video that you guys put together because that showed Heidi that her love for her family and the love for the grandkids and the joy she found in that. That was Heidi. Would you please join me in prayer? Loving God, your eyes are always upon us, nurturing us through all the days of our lives, sheltering us by your grace, and preparing a special place for each of us in eternity. We give you thanks, and we praise this day for the life of Heidi. She brought laughter to a world that knows too many tears, kindness to places filled with hate, 
friendship to people who needed a shoulder to lean on and the support of an embracing arm. Welcome her, merciful God, into your joyous, eternal home. We ask you, O God, to be with Heidi's family and friends as they walk through a valley of deep shadows where it feels as if the sun will never shine. Let the bright light of your love and compassion reflect into all the dark crevices of their continuing journey. Lift them from the depths of sorrow and pain. Allow their feelings of loss to be surmounted by comforting memories of good times that were spent with the one they love. Lead them by the still waters of peace and anoint them with the oil of faith. We ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who came into the world that we might have unending joy and eternal life. Amen. I will begin our scripture reading with Lamentations chapter 3. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those who hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is is eternal. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, that we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And from Philippians chapter 4. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him. Who gives me strength? This has been a privilege for Heidi's co workers to be having a part in her service. Don, thank you for letting each of us um, play a role. Um, we love her dearly. And if she ran everything when she was at home, she came here and she ran everything here too. (laughs) So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? If Heidi were with us physically in this space, I'm sure many of you might be thinking to yourself, this is what Heidi would be thinking of all of this. As I was looking at this, some of the thoughts that I think Heidi would be thinking of this, Heidi would be thinking, what am I going to do with all these plants? Where am I going to put all these plants? And then, Heidi would say, who on earth put the pulpit up there with so many fingerprints on it? (laughs) And that would be my fault, because Heidi is not here to clean it any longer. And so I will, in fact, make sure that we do not proceed with a dirty pulpit. So, give me just a second. on the inside. Oh, no. (laughs) 
then Heidi would be wondering about what kind of magical little creatures were running around in the back of the church getting fingerprints on the inside of the glass pulpit. There we go. As Don and I were meeting to talk through the service, he asked that we would include the Philippians passage of Scripture, which Pastor May just read for us. If you have grown up in the church, you maybe have committed yourself to memorizing key scriptures, and Philippians chapter 4, 13 is usually right up near the top. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. We pull this verse out when we are facing adversity and challenges and we need a little pep talk. This is an athlete's verse right here. Before they take to the court or the field or the track, they might say to themselves, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I can do anything. We used to sing a song at camp. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's right. It is, it's like God can do all things, and he'll do it in me. And that means I can do all things. And that feels good. It gives us almost this sense of being Superman and Superwoman. It's Jesus who gives us the, the strength to be extraordinary. Yet the Apostle Paul situates this incredible verse of hope and faith right in the middle of a passage about need, about provision, and most importantly, about contentment. What is contentment? Contentment is that state of being satisfied, pleased. It is a state of happiness. When was the last time that you can remember that you were thinking to yourself, I am satisfied. I am content. Was it when you pushed away from your favorite meal, having eaten your fill? I am satisfied. And then the dessert comes out. I am no longer satisfied. <laughs> Was it at the end of a perfect date with someone that you love? Maybe it's waking up from an afternoon nap that you hadn't even realized that you needed, but you feel so refreshed from it. Maybe it's the completion of a project that you've been working on for some time. Perhaps you feel content when you held your child for the first time or your grandchild for the first time. Contentment stands out in our minds because it is so rare in our lives. Our economy does not run on contentment. Our politics do not run on contentment. Our entertainment does not run on contentment. All of those things require that we get a taste of satisfaction, a glimpse of pleasure, a fleeting moment of happiness, but ultimately we are left wanting more. Our contentment is so often dependent upon the condition that we find ourselves in. I'm content when my belly is full, when my heart is full of love, when my work is done, my body rested, and my dreams realized. That is when I am content. Then I am satisfied, but it only lasts for a moment. To the church in Philippi, Paul writes that he has learned to be content no matter the circumstances. He knows what it's like to have plenty, and he knows what it's like to be in need. Yet, according to Paul, the situations and circumstances are not the secret of his contentment. It's Jesus. Jesus Christ. This is who Paul has found satisfying. This is where he finds his pleasure. It is in Christ Jesus that the Apostle Paul finds happiness. Paul faces every situation firmly in the grip of Jesus who gives him strength. Followers of Jesus are not suddenly granted a life of exuberant blessing in prosperity in spite of what some TV preachers might promise you. Followers of Jesus are not spared from the heartaches of this world. Followers of Jesus experience job loss. Followers of Jesus experience cancer. 
Followers of Jesus experience the death of a child, a parent, and a spouse. Jesus does not remove us from the hurts of this world. Instead, he does something far better. He comes and he sits with us in our hurt. And he satisfies. He brings his contentment. Furthermore, followers of Jesus are not apathetic toward the hurts and miseries of this world. Rather, Christ's love compels us to care for others. Compassion, mercy, and justice flow from the heart of God, and likewise, it is contagious for those who follow Jesus. Contentment in Christ Jesus actually invigorates Jesus' followers to enter into other people's pain with the love of Christ. The Apostle Paul's secret, his contentment, his satisfaction and pleasure, his happiness, it's Jesus. That is Paul's secret. And as already has already been shared, that was Heidi's secret as well. And though she did a marvelous job of keeping secret her uh, prank on her sister, I think even on staff we wondered, where's Heidi? She was just gone for a couple of days. We weren't sure what happened. So she was great at keeping that secret. The secret that Heidi has about her contentment, she was terrible at keeping that secret. She wanted everybody to know. It's Jesus. Jesus. When you look at Heidi, I saw, at least when I looked at her, I saw a woman who understood contentment. She was content in plenty and in want because... She had Jesus with her all the time. There was no one else she would rather have by her side. Her family, you all are amazing. And she loved you crazy. But she loved Jesus even more. And as much as you feel that there were times when you drove her crazy, and you did, in those moments, her contentment was with Jesus. And her desire was that her family and her friends and the people that she would come in contact with, the women who she had her heart break for that were facing uh, uh, abuse in their own homes and needed to be liberated from that, women on the other side of the world who were facing poverty, her heart went out to them and she wanted them to have a contentment in a relationship with Jesus Christ and she would go everywhere, anywhere that she needed to go and do what she needed to do to accomplish that. Even if that meant driving a bus full of screaming kids over to camp and back and sugaring them up at Dairy Queen on the way back. <laughs> Crazy. But she wanted them to know that all of this stuff is fleeting, but Jesus is eternal. All of these things are going to pass, but Jesus is waiting for you out of his great love for you. Heidi had no intention of keeping this secret to herself. And if you are here this evening and you have not surrendered your heart to Jesus, if you think to yourself, my life could use a little contentment, my life could use some satisfaction that isn't so fleeting, I want to invite you to meet the Jesus that Heidi knew so well. Don't let this evening pass without taking a moment and simply, it's not complicated, you just say, Jesus, I'm tired of following my own rules. I'm tired of going after my own, uh, 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 chasing my own dreams that seem to just evaporate before me. I want to put my trust in you. I want you to be my Lord, and I accept your gift of salvation. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I want to put my trust in you. It's that simple. And if you have not done that before you fall asleep tonight, I encourage you, take that invitation. Pastor Dan read for us from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I want to read it again. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, 
but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And our friend Heidi will have the windows cleaned when we get there. Let us pray. Father God, Lord Jesus, we as a people... Death never comes easy in our world and in our life to those who are left to bear the pain and the emptiness. And so, God, in our grief, we cry out that you would meet us in our pain, in our sense of loss. And yet at the same time, Lord, we rejoice because we know that your servant, Heidi, has been welcomed into your arms. There's not a doubt in my mind And Lord, I know that there was not a doubt in Heidi's mind either. God, draw near to us who uh, with fondness look upon her life. May we be inspired by her life with you to surrender our hearts to you, to go deeper in our devotion to you and go further in our mission in faithful obedience to you. Lord, as is recorded by the Apostle Paul, We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, and we know that in everything, God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ in Jesus, who is our Lord. This we pray in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you to listen to this song, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, uh, as we play that now. Let those words wash over you. Whose goodness faileth never I'm nothing like if I am here and he is mine forever And he is mine forever
goodness faileth never. Good Shepherd, may I sing your praise within your hearts forever. Within your hearts forever. I love the uh, quote that's in the program for this evening. Though sorrow may last for a night, there's joy that comes in the morning light. I think of the joy that Heidi had when she opened her eyes and saw Jesus face to face. Heidi wants you all to have that same joy. If you did not have a chance to uh, meet with the family, uh, before the service, but would like to uh, say hi to them. I'll ask the family if they'll be hang out in the chapel for a little bit longer. Otherwise, if you did, we, the ushers will be dismissing from the back, and we uh, invite you to uh, head out the exits. Um, thank you so much for coming to this celebration of life of a wonderful woman. And now hear this word of benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day. Amen and amen. Go in peace.